Oh. Thank you, Mr Chair, and thank you for the opportunity to, um, to come and talk. My name's Mark Wipers. I'm president of the Ellerslie Football Club, um, a uh, community club uh, that has 1,450 members right across the age groups from about four years of age to about 60. Um, its uh, catchment includes the Oraki Local Board, the Mungakeke and Tamaki, uh, the Mount Albert Eden, and the uh, Waitamata uh, Board, so we're spread across quite a bit of the Auckland uh, Central Isthmus, and in particular we draw our membership from uh, everywhere from Onihunga, Panmure, Glen Innes, Mount Wellington, and then come into the inner uh, eastern suburbs. So um, our demographic is very wide. Uh, we have quite a, a range of, of people, occupations, ethnicities, etc. Um, I come here today just purely to talk about the sports field charges, um, and having read the report, uh, I find it uh, totally inequitable uh, what is currently happening uh, and I just really wanted to make a, um, a few points in relation to that. Um, I think the first, the first point is uh, we as a club and me myself in particular talk a lot with a lot of other people within the f football uh, fraternity around Auckland and in particular we talk um, wide and high about how our clubs operate, how they work. Uh, what our cost structures are, how we can spend our money more efficiently because with limited budgets, limited revenue streams and a, and a decreasing uh, grant uh, sort of uh, uh, take that comes out of charitable trusts, we've got to be very careful about how we spend our money. And, um, and I think the, the, the first thing in terms of these sports field charges is when you talk to these um, other club members, and in particular people like South Auckland Rangers and Bucklands Beach, and not just the people in the inner uh, Auckland area, but outside of it, they, um, they love the idea that, uh, that there's this inequality. They absolutely love it because what it really does, it gives them an opportunity to spend their scarce resource of money on things that make a difference to their members. Um, uh, in particular, academies, tournaments, all sorts of other services that uh, the clubs are, are looking to provide. It's a very competitive environment out there. The community-based football uh, in Auckland, uh, you might think it's just a bit of a bit of a kick around, but it's actually very competitive, and, and all the clubs are competing uh, for members, and they're competing to offer uh, goods and services that make a difference to their members, um, because it's all about sustainability. The more people you can attract, uh, the better off you're going to be. So. Um, uh, it, it is inequitable to do so, and I think one of the interesting things would be when I talk to them about this inequality of sports field charges, they're very quick to say, gee, I hope it doesn't happen in our area, um, because that'll, that'll change their budgets quite considerably. So I think there's a risk there that when it's being um, unevenly uh, handled, uh, there's a risk of some people might benefit, some people might uh, actually be quite uh, a lot worse off. So. Um, we have to be aware that the clubs are looking that way. We're extremely conscious of the affordability of subscriptions in our catchment, um, and with a wide demographic base, as I said, we cannot simply um, adopt the approach of increasing uh, these subscriptions purely to offset this inequitable cost. Um, again, it's quite interesting to note that over the last two years, we haven't actually um, been invoiced for any ground field charges, and it's totally unbudgeted. Uh, over the last two years, so I'm not quite sure where we would find the money, even if the council finally does decide to uh, to charge it for some reason. So um, it is important to note that. Um, typically, if we start raising our subs, all we'll do is we'll, we'll one of two things happen: they move to another club that's cheaper, or they actually get out of active recreation. And um, and that's certainly not why I'm in, in the business of helping to run a football club, is I like seeing uh, people out there active. So I don't think that's uh, an effect that would be any good for anything. Um, our membership plays all over Auckland, it plays all the way from Waiuku all the way to the Hibiscus Coast, and, uh, and I, I, they should be able to compete across all those playing fields of Auckland on, a, on effectively, and no pun intended, but a level playing field. Um, and at the moment, that's not the case. Um, in the report, there is no tangible justification for why there is this inequality. Uh, and I find that very hard. Just because it's a legacy issue uh, does not mean it's right. And I think um, you councillors around the table here have to think long and hard about the rules have to be equal for all. And I think once they're equal for all and they have been 
thoroughly thought through, then a decision can be made. But I think at the moment, purely because maybe the funds can't be found uh, to help offset a lack of sports field charges, uh, does not mean that's the right decision. And I think um, we need to think about that. I also note that uh, there has been a number of adjustments uh, made with the sports field charging. Um, I'm not sure if I pronounce it right, but the Munga Authority is, is making some um, changes to how they do it so that it's a more consistent approach. Uh, and I understand there's other examples of it as well. So obviously um, it is something high on the priority list and I think uh, it needs to be dealt with. Mark, you have, I'll give you 30 more seconds. Sure, thank you. Um, that's, really, that's really where I, I, I wanted to, uh, to emphasise, really. So I think it's inequitable. Our club thinks it's inequitable. And I think uh, across Auckland, there needs to be a consistent approach. And, and you as a committee need to decide how that approach is made. But it needs to be consistent across everyone. So it is fair for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And we're aware you are representing a number of clubs. So thank you for coming. Do we have any questions of, of Mark? No, thank you very good. I must thank have you. done it brilliantly. Yep, thank you. you. So we have no local board input, but yes, we need to pass a resolution. To thank Mark, we have a mover. Thank you, Councillor Fletcher, Councillor Brewer. All those in favour? Aye. Local board input, I'm assuming, will come under sports field charges. So. No issue there. Extraordinary business. There is nothing. There are no notices of motion. So we now go on to the topic of interest, sports field charges. So we have uh, representatives from all the local boards, my understanding. But first How are we going to do this? Because officers need to come. What we're going to do is we'll, we'll let um, Mark and, and Jane speak first as an introduction, and then we'll ask the local board chairs to come up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, committee members. Um, just for context um, and in response to some comments from Mark Wipers, um, sports field charges uh, have been around for quite some time. Uh, the current charges in the central area of uh, Auckland Council relate back to decisions made by the former Auckland City Council in the early 90s, and that's when they were adopted. At the same time, there were actually charges across some of the other legacy councils as well, including the Monaco City Council. Over time, those were dropped. The cost to recover was higher than the benefit. Uh, and in the end, it was just the Auckland City Council that continued to have charges. And those were inherited by the Auckland Council. So the purpose of the report before you today is to consider the removal of the charges and there are a couple of options presented essentially around the time frame for that. So the first option really is to say uh, an immediate removal of charges and uh, no doubt you will hear some more from the local boards concerned about that. And there is a financial impact related to that um, and currently that is budgeted at $181,000 worth of revenue. So there is an offset required. The other option is to consider this as part of the annual plan, not make an immediate decision, but to have a more informed discussion perhaps as part of the annual plan process for the next financial year. And that potentially could consider whether the charges stay and are applied equitably across the region or whether they are removed from the central area. So other than that, we'll take the report as read. We're happy to answer any questions that may arise. Councillor Casey, do you want the local board people to speak before you have a question? It's up to you. Your call. You're the chair. I think we'll, I think we'll have the um, local yes, board people <coughs> speak first. Thank you. So, Dearsley, are you speaking on behalf of five? And well, we'll all have our ten cents worth. Okay, right. And Simon, are you coming up? I believe you I'm possibly have right, a right, different right. view. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you could all just introduce yourself oh, for the sorry. sake of the public, if you don't mind. Thank you. Uh, Paul Walden, Waikiki Island Local Board. Peter Haynes, Albert Eden Local Board. <coughs> Desi Simpson, Orake Local Board. Charles Chambers, Chair Waitemata Local Board. Harry Doig, Puki Tapapa Local Board. Mm. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
Uh, so, Mr Chairman, thank you very much, councillors. Good morning. Uh, I don't think there's any debate that we all value our sports fields. They, along with all our parts, are the lungs of our city. We want them well used to create a healthy, livable city. But we have a huge inequitable problem as to how we charge for the use of our sports fields. Most of you have free use. It is considered core council business, paid for from our rates, significant for some. But sadly, the clubs and our central isthmus boards have been singled out as having to pay. To set things straight, and this is not mentioned in your report, the Oraki local board and other isthmus local boards have never approved the charging of clubs using our sports fields. Rather, we were advised by staff in June 2011 that a study of costs per play was, and I quote, nearing completion. And that this information, and I quote again, will help inform <coughs> pending policy work on sports field user charges and whether these will be removed totally or standardised across the region. That work was never done. But what was done was a selected number of wards, namely Mangareo Tahuhu and the Faux wards, had their sports field charges waived, even though they were part of the Auckland City Council legacy area. So the legacy concept has already been broken. But it gets worse. Auckland Council invoicing made a huge mistake and didn't invoice clubs for their use for two years. And now they face, this is, this is, this is sorry, two calendar years of club use, one <coughs> Auckland City Council year. And now they face two years of billing for their fields, which is unbudgeted, because they thought it wasn't going to happen anymore. And they are very upset, as you've heard from uh, Ellerslie Football Club. Just And look, we, I, I didn't ask Ellerslie Football Club to come, by the way. I want that absolutely on record. <coughs> They've come on their own volition and no, no ask from me. Um, and they're upset not just about the double billing, but being disadvantaged and being charged full stop. Now, during June this year, Parks officers advised the Isthmus local boards that they were going to recommend to the governing body the complete and immediate removal of sports field charges, which would be funded by organisational savings. But the report in your agenda recommends that Isthmus boards will now need to pay these from LDI. And I want to know why this change of direction. I asked the officers at the Oraki local board on countless occasions if that was going to be their recommendation and the response was yes. It was not ever suggested to our board and those of my colleagues that LDI was going to use it as an excuse. The existing proposal of recommendation to use LDI funding will reduce for us between 20, 31 and 42k a year. Now over the LTP, and in fact over the five years of Auckland Council, we've addressed a lot of inequities of the legacy councils. But isn't it ironic that at the very year, this year, that the Isthmus boards will lose $4, four million of legacy funding that we've actually had, sorry I'll correct myself, that the Isthmus boards will generously allocate back to the region $4 million of legacy funding, that you're going to charge our sports fields and our clubs and our, sorry, and you're going to charge the clubs and our sports fields for use. The very year you take away $4 million of legacy, you still ask us to pay. We completely reject the use of our limited budget to make up for the loss of revenue when others don't have to. If you make the recommendation using LDI, it is completely contrary to the principle, principle of a unified council. Please don't give us the yellow card. Appreciate we're all in here for the same gold. 
headbutt this report and recognise that we are taking the ball and trying hard to score what should be a level playing field for all. Use your governance decision wisely and promote fair play both on and off the report. I strongly recommend the committee waive all fees for sports fields in the central local board area for 15-16 until this area until it's been reduced. Thank you. Thank you, Dursley.